Many people believe that photosynthesis is the most important reaction studied in chemistry. The reaction captures the energy of solar radiation and stores it in the chemical bonds of carbon in the form of sugar glucose. In photosynthesis, the energy of visible light is used to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose. Oxygen, a molecule necessary for aerobic life on Earth, is a fortunate byproduct. In photosynthesis, six moles of carbon and six moles of water are converted into one mole of glucose and six moles of oxygen. Photosynthesis is a central component of Earth's carbon cycle. The stored chemical energy on sugar and the biomolecules synthesized from it are released through respiration. The respiration equation is the reverse of the photosynthesis reaction. When living plants and animals die, geological processes that take tens of thousands of years convert their carbon compounds into fossil fuels. Like the respiration reaction, we have seen that the combustion reaction of fossil fuels also produces carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide enters the atmosphere and dissolves in the oceans. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing as billions of tons are added from the combustion of fossil fuels every year. Since atoms and molecules have different weights, how can chemists count carbon and account for it in its different forms? They use a quantity called a mole. A mole has two definitions. It is Avogadro's number of atoms or molecules, and Avogadro's number is extremely large, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, or 6 followed by 23 zeros. One mole is trillions and trillions of molecules. Chemists have picked carbon as a standard for weight. So one mole is also the number of carbon atoms in exactly 12 grams of pure carbon-12. While the mole is a large unit that we do not use in our everyday life, we normally use other units of smaller quantity. Examples are a dozen eggs or a ream of paper. Can you imagine what Earth would look like if we converted it with a mole of eggs? The unit mole lets chemists use the periodic table to move from the invisible world of atoms and molecules to the macroscopic world of grams of materials that we can hold and weigh. One mole of hydrogen atoms weigh one gram, while one mole of oxygen atoms weighs 16 grams. The periodic table uh, gives a weighted average based on the different isotopes in the sample. The vast majority of carbon isotopes are those of carbon-12. Mathematically, Kevin used this mole-weight relationship as a conversion factor. They can easily calculate the number of atoms or molecules in any given weight of a sample. This conversion factor allows us to use chemical reactions and their molar ratios between reaction and products to easily determine what weight of product will be produced. This is how chemists calculate theoretical yields of products.